Congre uh, welcome to the program. It's so good to welcome to Public Access and Manhattan Network, and congratulations on the book. As always, it's so very well written and meaningful, and congratulations on all that. Thank you. Thank and you. in the audience, welcome very, very much to Conversations. A great pleasure, personal and uh, professional, to welcome to the program a world-renowned uh, anthropologist, Lionel Tiger. He's got a very distinguished career. We've done programming with him in the past and so forth. The world's well aware of his work. He wrote Men in Groups and other major works that have influenced the, you know, understanding the human condition. The most recent book that's out just now, as we talk in April of, uh, of uh, 2010, called uh, God's Brain, uh, co-written with, a, is it Michael McGuire? McGuire, McGuire, yes. and uh, so forth. A really tour de force. I've been reading it, and it's really interesting. We're going to talk about that, and uh, Lionel, welcome very, very much to conversation. Thank you for having me back. My great good pleasure, and I wonder maybe we could just briefly go over your background a little bit, born and raised, educated a little bit, and then we want to get into the details of this uh, major work that you and uh, Michael have put together. Well, there's nothing very interesting about my life except to, to me. Uh, I, I was born in, in Montreal in Canada and mm -hmm. uh, lived there until I guess I was 20 or 22 and then went to uh, graduate school at the London School of Economics mm -hmm. and then uh, worked in Vancouver and British Columbia for five years, having spent a year in West Africa uh, during, uh, during research. And then I came to New York uh, in 1969, and I've been a, a boring stick in the mud ever since. You're not boring at all. Well, I'm here to, to testify. Okay. You and Robin well. Fox have written really seminal work. What were you doing in West Africa? What was your at, at London school? Were you doing economics? When did you get into anthropology? Well, at London School of Economics, yeah. it, 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 it's a misnomer because it is also a school of anthropology, political As science. As part of the University of London? Uh, yes, yes, part okay. of the University of London. Uh -huh. and, uh, and a, a very interesting place, I must uh, say. And uh -huh. uh, of course, London was great at that time. And yeah. uh, for a kid from Montreal, it was sure. quite a spectacle. So uh, it was terrific. Uh, but I was in West Africa because my thesis, mm -hmm. uh, PhD thesis, was on the transition in Ghana from a colony to an independent country. Kwame Nkrumah? Kwame Nkrumah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, major voice. Yes, yeah. and mm -hmm. that was the first African country to become independent. Absolutely. And I thought it would be, would be very interesting to see how the civil service, which in fact had been the colonial bosses yes. uh, until 1960, transferred its uh, pattern and loyalty to a new locally elected government. A huge subject. It was a very, very interesting subject. I would and like I was, to get your thoughts at some uh, point well, on Zimbabwe. Well, uh, that's a Currently. S separate, separate okay, yeah, disaster, right. but yeah, um, yeah, okay. that's a whole other, mm. uh, a rather different issue in a yeah, different sure. time period. Yeah. But that's why I was in Ghana, and uh -huh. I, as I said, I lived in Vancouver for five years, and I've been in New York since uh, 1969. Okay. okay, very, very good. That's all there. And you've been living in New York ever since. Yes. You like New York? I actually do. Uh, I do too. I think I, it's I, great. Yeah, it's uh, it's a really in many ways a small village. It it's uh, central to so many things that's mm. interest that are interesting, and uh, I never found it oppressive or mean. And the people are actually extremely polite and skilled at right. interacting in a very dense environment. So I, I have n n no complaints. Yeah, I actually, I had somebody, I always thought it was 192 countries in the UN, and now it's 195. They're growing like mushrooms and so forth. But I understand there's sizable communities of 189 of them in the New York City area. It's a little in the United Nations. Yeah, I think absolutely. it's great. Yes, it's, uh, it's terrific. All you have to do if, if you live in Manhattan, as I do, you just take the 7 train to Queens, and suddenly you're in, in Greece. Uh, you're in Greece, or and then you're in, in, in Hyderabad, and then you're in wherever. So, it's great. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, some people wouldn't like that. They'd find it disconcerting. But, but I find it after you can walk down the street, you don't hear English. I think it's wonderful. Well, uh, and, and people manage to get along together. Which they is do. Terrific. Yeah, it's they terrific. do. So it's a great place. Yeah. Okay, now you've written all well and everything, but let's get right to the book, if I could. Uh, God's Brain. How long have you been researching it? You and Michael were working on it together. Maybe you could just uh, get <coughs> into the, yeah. the book. Michael McGuire is a neuropsychiatrist yes. who uh, had been director of the psychiatric, psychiatric clinic at the UCLA Med School. Uh -huh. He had trained at Harvard Med School and Mass mm -hmm. General and so on, and was uh, in, in California. He's from California originally. And uh, he had been interested in the relationship between brain chemistry and social behavior in monkeys. Mm -hmm. And so he did a series of experiments 
involving a monkey hierarchy and was able to tap the levels of serotonin in the monkey's systems. That's one of the neurotransmitters. Uh, right, it's a yeah. very important neurotransmitter. Yes, indeed. At the time, one didn't know a great deal about it. We, we still don't know everything we need to know about it. But he was able to show, and it was a remarkable finding, that the brain chemistry depended on social position. That's very, very yeah, interesting. It's quite the reverse of what we used to think, that the brain hard is wired. hardwired. Yeah. And so uh, yeah, that, it, that yeah. in fact, uh, has led to a whole series of pharmacological innovations such as uh, Prozac, which yeah. is sort of a related or to if, if I may, by 30, 35 years ago, we did not know. I mean, what, one of the things about the modern era is it seems to me, Lionel, every day there comes over the transom another revolution in one of the fields of human knowledge. And we didn't know 35 or so years that, that the neurotransmitters with their uptake and the biochemical model of the... Uh, of various states of consciousness, for instance, in the brain, uh, was not hardwired. It was a series of uh, neurotransmitters and their right. uptake and so forth. And we've only learned that within the last uh, a few decades. Well, we even knew. I think a set of a set of feta, a set of choline was the first that they found. But that that's a whole area of discovery that just opens up worlds. Doesn't and it? in fact, now we can photograph it with fMRI, and yeah. we have we we can actually see the thing happening that we yeah. used to think was the soul or yeah. some mysterious occult uh -huh. phenomenon. You can uh -huh. see the juices going in the brain. Uh -huh. So uh, it seemed to us that uh, we should make use of this information. Mm -hmm. We try to anyway. I've always been interested in social behavior, and Michael has always been interested in the relationship between brain chemistry and social behavior. Yeah. And furthermore, we were very concerned that people had taken uh, very partisan approaches to religion, either right. completely in favor of it as fundamentalists are, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, sort of hostile Dawkins. as uh, Dawkins and Hitchens, and, Hitchens yeah. and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I've known Richard Dawkins for many years, and I admire him. I think he's excellent, but mm -hmm. uh, his uh, God delusion book seems to me unfortunate in the sense that uh, what he uh, in, in essence says if you're religious there's something wrong with you. Yeah, you, they'll argue against religion and almost religious for fervor. Well, that's a, that's a separate, <laughs> yeah, a separate yeah. uh, thing and yeah. they've in fact created a set of groups called the Brights. Uh -huh. They were impressed that gays mm. managed to get good reputations by having a good brand name, so mm. they thought Brights was appropriate. <laughs> uh, Brights happens to be a disease, which is <laughs> yes, a, a, a separate problem. Yeah, but yeah. The, uh, the fact is that we thought that it was time to look at religion as a behavior. Uh -huh. None of this God tells us to do this, and none right. of this, if you believe in God, you're a fool. Yeah. Uh, let's try to take a calm, respectful, but skeptical or searching mm -hmm. view mm -hmm. of this entire a story. A scientific approach. A scientific With approach. the knowledge that is available to us, which was not in which the past. Which was not And even that's a very um, important lesson for humanity to that's learn. That's right. And, yeah. and, and not only that, when mm -hmm. one looks at what, uh, what what's happening militarily in the world, it used to be that, that people fought over whether they were communists or capitalists right. or whatever. Now they fight over religion. They and, do indeed. They, and well, it's well. very peculiar to me why somebody would say, well, I believe so strongly in my notion of God that mm. I will kill you yeah, right. if you have a different one. Right, right. Well, killing people is very difficult. Yeah. It's uh, messy and, and costly, yeah. and they don't like it. Well, he's uh, written that book on the clash of civilizations, Huntington. Right? Huntington, right. And he's right in the sense that it's well, not it's, just all geopolitical... You know, like we tended to argue out of the right. past. It's uh, it's based on fugitive ideas about right. what constitutes religious truth. Right. How and we uh, and what's the evidence for one view as opposed to another? Right. Some old books, mm -hmm. leaves leaves of old books that yeah. that, that are that are claimed to be authoritative. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you, you can dismiss that part of the argument and say that it doesn't matter where the source of it is. The fact is that religion is a pattern of social uh, commitment, which is, yeah. which is very, very important to most people. Very important and also very widespread, not only across the globe, but also through the annals of history. From the earliest beginnings that there, people have been uh, trying to understand some of the larger issues. Right. Uh, probably 80 to 90 percent of human beings have some some religion that they they are they are prepared to say. 80 to 90, that's yeah. a high percentage. It's a very high percentage. and. Uh, 
uh, for example, if you, as we say in our book, God's Brain, if you type in religion to mm -hmm. Google, mm -hmm. you will get 375 million entries. It will take you the rest <laughs> of your life just going through it. And there are 4,200 uh -huh. distinct faiths or religion. 4,200. 4,200. Each of those, yeah. uh, well, yeah. maybe, mm. but each of those yeah. groups thinks that they're right. Right, right. And why and how they do this is a very interesting and important matter. And, and also, what does religion connote in terms of human needs? You have a term, brain soothe. Well, we try. And, we were trying uh, to s sort of civilize the size of the problem okay. and to put it into individual context that people could understand. And mm -hmm. we uh, developed the idea of uh, brain pain. Mm -hmm. Brain pain is what we all feel. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't get the computer to work right or you get a flat tire on the way you to work. You can't get the computer to work right? Well, you have uh, trouble with that, uh, are no, you, sir? No, uh, please, uh, don't, we can, don't. We can share our angst, right? Okay, yeah, we yeah. can. But, mm. but people have a, a chronic amount of things that irritate them. That's Absolutely. Just brain pain. Mm. And and it's almost muscular. You know, you just... You, Absolutely. Yeah. Engrams, Mr. Hubbard right. used to talk about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, and, and co in contrast, mm -hmm. uh, people like to what we call brain soothe. Mm -hmm. And they, you can do that by taking a walk in the park, by hearing some lovely music, by going to a spa. You can also get that brain soothing by going to a religious service if you happen to believe in it. Or one. you can also, through the use of pharmaceuticals, in fact, because the pharmaceuticals affect the ratios of neurotransmitters and the synaptic cleft between the axions it, of the 10 to the 10th power brain neuron cells to make up the human brain. That's right. And so when people say that for example, in parts of Europe, there aren't many people who go to religious ceremonies or uh, even claim that they're affiliated to a religious group. Many of them are taking psychoactive drugs, uh -huh, uh, either uh -huh. prescribed by doctors or uh, buying from some local uh, agriculturalist. Uh -huh. And so uh, there's agriculturalist. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So yeah. there's a, there's a, a sort of substitute for efforts to brain soothe. Yeah, you can do it through yogic discipline or through other things. You can a, any state of human consciousness will be character whether it's pain you win the lottery your brain will be acting in a certain kind of way you know it's a, a break I just had a great uh, 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 surcease from a trauma producing thing in my life uh, you will have you have a biochemical model for various states of consciousness in the human brain process and we try to relate that to the extent the obvious social structures uh, which we call religious which have produced some astonishing unpredictable realities like St. Patrick's Cathedral, for example. Yeah. What, what the hell is that about? Yeah. Uh -huh. <coughs> mm. <coughs> and think of what it cost to build it. Yeah, absolutely. You had to get planning permission and bring the stones in and it, an immensity of activity. Not and yet, to mention the pyramids and uh, Pharaoh's day. Well, it's uh -huh. not clear that they had the same religious code. No, no, they would have had a different take, but it was all, you said 4,200 or how many? 4,200, yes. We were, uh, now, yeah. and then they've had them and they've been based, and it goes back probably to primordial times, it or one uh, projects one, back one, in time. Probably as far as we could figure out about 150,000 years ago about at least. That. Can we agree that it's about 200,000 <coughs> years ago that our species evolved? Or how do you feel on that stringer I, and that thing out of Africa? Uh, <clears throat> Just a sidebar, maybe. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, it's so complex, and there are, for example, it was just defined last week or two weeks ago yeah. in, in uh, yeah, South Africa. Johannesburg. And uh, that changes the, the rules. But you really have to know what you're doing when you make an, an announcement about what you think. Yeah. And at this point, I'm not able to responsibly say, I think that this is an ancestor of Homo sapiens or it's an ancestor of a, a raccoon. Uh, you, I, 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 it's okay. very hard. You can make a general comment. Yeah. But the fact is that that's a technical issue. It'll get resolved yeah. because they're, they're, the weight of evidence will show that uh, you we're at least 150,000 yeah. years old yeah. uh, and probably two to three million. Uh, no we doubt about we that. being hominoid homo so or homo, homo sapiens? Sapi uh, hom the, the hominid line. Three million? Line. You can go back three two, million? Two to three million. You can. You, yeah, well, you can make a plausible Lucy case. Lucy and uh, Lucy Artipithecus was, now? Yeah, uh, Lucy was 2.3, yeah, I think, something, and yeah. Artipithecus. But I know. never thought of Lucy as being homo sapiens. No, but it's, it's, it's our an ancestor. They said that Artipithecus, we just found a couple of right. nature reported the whole issue on A couple of years ago. Yeah, and thought that was the line that led to homo 
Habilis or Habilis, Homo habilis? Yes, yes. Uh, but again, th there will be controversy about yeah, this, sure. and there should be. It's a huge <coughs> subject, yeah. But the fact is mm -hmm. that we weren't born yesterday. No, no, right, maybe uh, 10,000 generations. And that's, that's the essence of the question, mm -hmm. especially when you get religions that have a very precise date about when we started as a species. I know, I just read some things about the Judaic thing, 5,782 is the beginning of the universe. The beginning of now the universe. Now that can't make sense, I mean, in terms of well, uh, not any practical. And, and if you're using years in the normal sense of years. I, mean, I, I, I wouldn't uh, bet on it, and, uh, the, it, but on the other hand, for example, I, I, if you're Tom Cruise mm -hmm. and you're a Scientologist yeah. and you sign a contract with your Scientology guru yeah. and pay the money, yes. uh, it's a racket, mm -hmm. uh, you sign a contract for a million years. Is that right? Uh, I didn't know that. Well, it's, you should look look into it yeah, because, would, yeah. uh, because you uh, are presumed to be immortal. Uh -huh. If you're a Scientologist, right. nothing ever goes bad on you. Okay, well, that's really interesting. It's I have to useful. look into that. Yeah, I didn't realize that. that. Million years. Well, that is that taps into the idea of mortality that we're aware of, perhaps uniquely among the species. So far aware, as we know, yeah. we, uh, that's a very interesting yeah. question. Uh, animals have some recognition of death, uh -huh. I think. Um, uh, whether they have our idea of an afterlife, which is remarkable when you yes, think about it. Yeah, right. I have no idea, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but it's certainly the case. And again, in God's brain, we we talk about the fact that we have created a set of architectural wonders called yeah. heaven or paradise right. or whatever, and an equivalent hell mm -hmm. or Hades mm -hmm. or whatever for bad people, yeah. on the basis of no evidence mm -hmm. at all, no mm -hmm. tangible... Well, we claim divine connection. Well, that, yeah. that, there are many, many people mm -hmm. who do that. For example, the current uh, uh, Prime Minister, whatever his title is, uh, Ahmadinejad of, of Iran, of Iran uh, has a, a, a uh, part of his routine where he goes off by himself mm -hmm. for a certain period of time mm -hmm. uh, in a room, or I don't know how he does it, mm -hmm. but he claims that he's communing with God through Khomeini or some such manner of operation. And they have a prophetic thing with the Amman, the hidden Amman, <coughs> and the a prophetic tradition uh, that is interesting, that, that Shia branch of Islam. Right. But the, the fact is that, uh, uh, what's the evidence for that? Well, Except yeah. it works for him. Yeah. And it, it makes him um, uh, a, a person you think e either of as highly uh, ethical and forceful or dangerous. Uh -huh. Because well, who knows what the hell he's learning from this secret room when yeah. he's talking to whoever. Right. But if you're tapped into the divine, then you've got uh, written, what do you call it, chapter and verse in terms of the way things work. And you do not have to repair or be too terribly concerned with conflicts that come out of a scientific process no, of advanced learning in a, in a conscious, rational sense. Actually, most prophets have not a, no problems with scientists. They have problems with other prophets oh, who, uh, who really? really object to their effort to take over the, uh, the constituency, the, the group. Yeah. Uh, and so you have, within religious groups, you have real fights between the Sunni and the Shia, uh, between the Baptists and the Episcopalians. Yeah. And these are real struggles. And the branches of the Episcopalians uh, will fight. Yeah. Endlessly. Yeah, right. 4,200 out of strong, well, you're saying, right? Yeah. Yes. So the, and they will fight like demons. Oh, they, and they're completely co convinced that they're absolutely correct. Uh -huh. And Each I, one. Each yeah. one. And, uh, you know, one has to respect that because it's an artifact of human singularity. Just as when a painter does a painting, he thinks this is the greatest painting ever. <laughs> right. <laughs> or somebody, My daddy used to say there's no accounting for taste. Uh, well, that's, You know, I don't know. You know well, uh, uh, but, mm. but the fact is that that uh, religion as a force seems to mobilize human energy in a phenomenal way. And has over and the has, ages, and, apparently. And so that's become, significant. Yeah. It has now become extremely dangerous. Uh, you uh, think so, yeah. Well, okay, yeah, Robert. Clearly, is, in terms of the, yeah. of, of the uh, nature of the world, particularly when you get jihadi type of people that uh. think that somehow the world is just a lot better if we can kill you.
Uh, so well, much yes, that's right. That's right. That's you got about 1.5 billion people of the Islamic faith, and that seems to be the enemy du jour. It used to be commies, right? Right. Well, commies in the of MacArthur. Right. Well, McCarthy, that was, right. And uh, so now it's the Islam it seems to be the enemy du jour of the model that more or less informs the geopolitical structure right. of how they operate uh, we, the we, planet. We get relatively few Episcopalian terrorists, you know, sitting on seems airplanes. That way. Yeah. At least high Episcopalians <laughs> right. don't seem to go that way. It, well, it is going to. Yeah. Might mess up the white glove. Yeah. Right, except mm. <laughs> the tea is getting yeah, cold. Yes, you know. right, right. So uh, there are these issues, but uh, again, what McGuire and I tried to do in yeah. this book was just take a uh, an embracing but careful uh, and uh, um, uh, analytical view of right. this immense behavior. And with great empathy for all. Absolutely. If I would suggest, you well, have, you're, you've you're not book, taken so. a, you've not, well, a good deal of it, it and congratulate you, but you, you, you've not taken a fundamentalist position in terms no. of, and you seem to have a, a responsible and a re respect for some sort of level of mystery that will be revealed as we move through time, or synergy that's going well, to be Well, I'm prepared you know, to say that I don't know everything. That's not really, hard you for don't? me to do. No, I, I don't. You, we got you in here thinking you have no, 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 Well, that's your problem. You, okay, yeah. Well, uh, we're going to have to talk to our booking people, You right? better do that. I thought, sure, you, you had it all down cold. No, I, if I had, no. I would, uh, I'd be working for Citibank. Okay. No, that's a whole different thing, but it's a, it's a thing that's been there and it's been there from the beginning of time, it seems, or is from human consciousness. We have these ritual things. We had the, uh, can't, do, do we know well, uh, tracing back, but yeah, we had Neolithic, we had the beginning of civilization, the Oriental and uh, Egypt and this sort of thing. But back into the hunting and gathering and the roaming, do we have any references to when first these questions of spirituality came to be part of the human scenario and consciousness? Uh, it's, it's very difficult to extrapolate from yeah. the evidence we have, but for example, when I was writing a book on optimism, I was mm -hmm. interested in, in uh, cave paintings because yeah. they were uh, artifacts that mm -hmm. you could actually see. Absolutely. And I remember being in a cave in France, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Peshmerl, mm. uh, actually no, Lufignac, mm. uh, where, uh, which happened to be privately owned, it was on somebody's land. Mm. And this was a, a cave in which uh, there was a a passageway of about six miles underground. Wow. And the only way we could go was in a little train, uh, and there was electricity, so yeah. you could see what you were doing. And then yeah. you went to the end of the end of the passageway, and then there was a room that had uh, arced ceilings that looked just like a chapel. I'll be done. And uh, six miles in from any it, entrance or that's egress. Right. That's right. Holy Toledo. And uh, again, no electricity. Right, of course. So what people did in that chapel or that area was they would take red pigment mm -hmm. on their fingers and they would make handprints. And so you had this entire room full of images that had been provided by people. And they would have had come six miles underground through a tunnel it. to do that. And, uh, my and that would have been what, 30,000 years? 20, uh, that was 17,000. 17. And my assumption was that it was an initiation ceremony for okay. young men. Okay. So that this was an act of warrior heroism. We do know about those <coughs> things from the primordial uh, initiation ceremonies, right. marriage all. ceremonies, these kind that's of things right. we have some reading of. Yeah. And and uh, it, it it's a pretty damn good initiation if you're able willing and able to take that six mile trek without electricity and back and put your mark on the chapel as it were then you're in were you off, were there offshoots you could have gotten lost if you weren't on the track you had a railroad track that went right in the right way but and you could had, have gotten lost and oh, you sure, was a, a sure. to get there and back was a, a I, I, feat I, of a, a rite of passage or something. It, it, certainly perhaps I, I, uh, I, I don't know if there were bones found in the little offshoot. That's what you I'm know, wondering. The, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I was so struck by the remarkable symbolic power right. of, of what I did That's see. That's quasi-spiritual, religious kinds of things can be read into some of these cave paintings from ancient times. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Lascaux, for yeah. example, yeah. again, where the 
uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to go. You can't g get in there now because of the pollution that people cause. But I was fortunate enough to be able to go into the original cave in Lascaux, and, uh -huh. and it is astonishing. You mm. see pictures of drawings of animals again, mm. uh, the size of a of a, a, a cathedral. Yeah, and uh, and well done, beautifully done. Figurative, for example, yeah. there was one <laughs> one that I saw, of, and that goes back thirty thousand. That's uh, somewhere around that. Yeah, point. right. There was the one of, of a uh, bison mm. that, and this was the cave had uh, it was sort of curved like the this. musculature. Yeah, so you you saw the beginning of the sculpture, the, the, bow relief. No you, yeah. no, you just saw the beginning of the line, yeah. and then you didn't see anything a anymore until you turned the corner, and then the line continued. <laughs> so the so sculpture, the, yeah. something yeah. was going on in that person's uh, yeah. head. Right. So uh, there's no question that Homo sapiens has been making artistic images for a very, very long time. Artistic images with a spiritual content. Can we read that in, or it's hard to do? But you're not, because you're talking religion now, and whether they were doing it strictly out of materialism thing or maybe you're going to get a better hunting thing or something. Well, like, that's certainly right, you know, but yeah. I, I, I tend not to like the word spiritual. Okay, I don't either. It yeah. strikes me as something you either get at a pharmacy or a booze shop, mm, okay. and, and, and it's unduly clinical. Uh -huh. uh, I, I'm not sure what's a better word, uh -huh. but the fact is that uh, there's something that's uh, tangible but seemingly imprecise, uh -huh. and if you want to say that that's spirituality, Go with it. That's well, funny. I know there's a thing. A Bucky Fuller. I don't know if you ever cottoned on to him much, but he used to. He coined the term. Mm -hmm. He would go uh, in the '60s or '50s, and he would say, "Has any, to talk to a group of a thousand or something," and he says, "Anybody ever heard of the word synergy?" Nobody had ever heard of the right. word. They heard of energy, not synergy. Now it's on every ad agency's lips because right. it's a behavior system is unpredicted by the sum of the parts. Right. And he said the universe was uh, thermodynamics was synergetic. You had nested uh, patterns of uh, evolutionary development and change and so forth. And uh, it seems to be, and he just sort of always held out a thing for a priori mystery in terms of universe. The layers of consciousness that evolve we develop uh, up the hominoid line, and then we get an understanding of things. But we may be at a we're, we're in an evolutionary process, perhaps with a future understanding that is going to be revealed to this beyond, in almost species terms, from where we've been. Well, maybe. Do you think we're maybe at that kind of a time? Eldridge and uh, and Stephen Jay Gould talk about punctuated equilibrium I, and that kind of thing right, in terms I, of change. I, it didn't. That, that never much interested me. I okay. thought that was okay. in the position. But you did. Uh, Bucky Fuller was yeah. uh, was. A very practical guy. At the same time, I remember hearing him when I was at college. He gave a lecture yeah. at the university I was at in Montreal, and uh, one of his uh, questions was, uh -huh. "How much does a bathroom weigh?" Yes, that's right. He was looking for ephemeralization, doing more with less. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and then you look at the tiles and the heavy stuff, and you realize who needs this. Or how 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 come a house has to? Well, the geodesic was the most efficient way to that's enclose right. space. That's right. It was one hundredth the weight or something right. involved in closing space. So right. I mean that's sure. that's an interesting ephemeralization was a term he coined where you do more with less. The computer chip that we're all confounded by, or you and I are confounded by, and a lot of others, is down now. There used to be full of room, the uh, right, uh, Colosseum full of vacuum tubes, down to a little chip that goes molecular now. That's right. And people are constantly trying to reduce the scale of the use of materials. For example, such a simple idea, collapsible containers, okay. ship containers. Instead right. of having to take a container from here to China with wheat or whatever you put in there, and then ship it back empty, which is not, not necessarily the case, but very often the container is on a boat yeah. and it's empty. And so if you can collapse it, which poses certain technical problems. Right. Uh, Addressable. Addressable mm. and being addressed. Yeah, right. And so uh, again, it's part of a whole effort. Of, it, it's a whole uh, chain it's yeah, a of uh, connection and everything like that. Another thing, if I could, just went last week to uh, Ethical Culture Society, J Jonathan Shell. Mm -hmm. And Daniel Ellsberg and uh, what's her name? Uh, Bennett. Bennett uh, 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 spoke with uh, Paul uh, with uh, 
Uh, Phil Donahue doing right. it on the d atomic thing. And they're talking, and I got a confirmation from them in little conversations after looking forward to doing a program about the destructiveness of the weapon systems that exist, particular thermonuclear and mm -hmm. also germ things. And I get from them, I wonder what you think, uh, that uh, unlike as recently as the Second World War, when you and I were both alive even, uh, the weapon systems that exist, if they were unleashed, as they have been throughout alarming regularity between various tribes, competing for food or their tribe advantage over others and so forth, that if they were to be unleashed, apparently uh, they can model that their species lethal, that they could, they have the ability to wipe out the human species, the weapon systems, extensions of human consciousness that have developed. Do you think that's true or not? Uh, and if it is, it's an existential new reality in the evolution of events and consciousness. I, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, the numbers there there were during the peak of the nuclear uh, fear uh, arguments, for example, that the Chinese made that uh, they wouldn't mind a Chinese nuclear war because they would end up with still 200 or 500 million Chinese because mm -hmm. you couldn't get them all. Yeah, you because got they're a all billion over the and place. a half, I think, they're yeah, now. A billion yeah. and a quarter. Yeah. And uh, Mao was uh, very strategic about this. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, it's plain that we have more weaponry than we need to protect ourselves, and the atomic weaponry in particular is extremely dangerous. Biological weapons are a different sort of thing, mm -hmm. partly because most people are afraid of them. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to go around with a, with a buck, bucket of anthrax uh, uh, to go to the New York yeah, subway. Yeah, it threw the whole Washington into a tizzy, didn't it, that when was, it got yes, around? Yeah. But it, uh, the, um, your average terrorist prefers something that blows up, because he can see it and he can, it's easy. Uh, but in any case, the uh, the whole issue of, of religion and well, I was just and, okay, and, yeah. and, uh, okay. uh, uh, Ahmed Ahmedinejad wanting, for example, as he said repeatedly, to destroy Israel. That would be a great for him, a great epic event because it's part of the sense of catastrophe that many religions have at their base. I don't know that it's really true. If I, I hear rewards and I hear we hear that a lot and everything, but I hear it more as I understand it. Uh, he thinks that uh, Israel will fall. He doesn't think he wants to destroy it. It's going to fall because it's out of sync with what the historical condition requires. I think it's a little different take, like Rome fell well, or he's something not, fell, he, that, they're, that they're, they're inappropriately set up in terms of the broader geostrategic involvement well, and uh, movement of the world, yeah, that's a which is a little different. It's a very different thing, and it, it's not a difference that requires an atomic bomb. Well, Marx used to say the same, or the Marxists would say that, and they had it with the religious fervor. Dialectical materialism is still being pronounced by Mr. Hu in China. They've still got that on a religious basis almost, dialectical materialism, and that capitalism, even Joseph Schumpeter, one of the celebrators of capitalism, says capitalism will not survive. Capitalism cannot survive. It has inherent contradictions. We've just had an economic meltdown, a possible Con, you know everything, and so that there are people who are saying that the system that's in place is not adequate to what the future requires. We're at a time of qualitative transformation, and we lack for vision of how we're going to subsume the outdated order and bring in a new order. And we don't have vision in our leadership, political, uh, business, or more importantly, intellectual. Well, I, do, I, I actually I don't see that. I think we'll okay. get through. You we, do. We, we'll okay. get. We always get through. Well, We've we got, have. We have in the past, and we're a very practical, opportunistic species, and we'll figure out a, an answer. For example, as we say in the book, if you're a, uh, a Seventh Day Adventist, yes, and you're waiting for that day when it all gets destroyed, <laughs> yes, right. and it doesn't, mm -hmm. so suddenly you become an Eighteenth Day Adventist, <laughs> yeah, and you're quite that's happy. Good. You yeah. got that line trademark, do you? Uh, yes. Can we yes. use that? Can, can we? Use, you, no, we can use it without fear of lawyers. No, lawyers, are, lawyers won't understand it. Oh, so, no, no, but you have lawyers on your side trademarking that uh, statement. I that want to put statement. it on my quote page. That's okay, you good. can go right ahead. Okay, and do thank that. you, thank you. Uh, but uh, uh, the the fact is that people are very opportunistic. Okay. And, uh, you know, coming back to uh, Iran, I don't see. W 
why Iran is any different from Syria or from Israel or from Lebanon. These are all countries in a particular area, yeah. and it so happens that the Israelis are more efficient and effective Very uh, efficient. Uh, uh, than, yeah. than the others, mm -hmm. and they can't stand it. They mm -hmm. just can't stand it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, uh, for example, when the uh, Israelis uh, voluntarily left parts of the Gaza Strip, mm -hmm. they had uh, many rather brilliantly organized greenhouses, which supplied roses for the Parisian market. They mm -hmm. would leave at midnight from Tel Aviv airport, and they'd yeah. be in Paris by 4 a.m. or uh -huh. 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. And when the Gazans took over, they destroyed them. Uh -huh. They took, they completely destroyed the greenhouses, mm -hmm. just tore them apart and so on. Well, you do that often enough and people begin to think that there's something wrong with their system. Well, that, and then also they're linked uh, he, he, cheek by jowl or hip by, at the hip with the United States of America. And the United States of America assumes, like it did in ancient Rome, after ancient Rome they had what they called the Agent Regime for about a thousand years. And the Agent Regime considered themselves, the, 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 the royal families of Europe, let's say, considered themselves as, quote, historically legitimate. We are the carriers of the right way for the world to be organized according to our precepts. Just happens we live in the castles and the serfs pick up the leaves when we tell them to and so forth. But they had that and they called themselves legitimate. We did have an enlightenment. We did have a revolution across the seas from Britain, I mean from uh, Europe. And they said, no, we don't go along with your idea of what's legitimate. And the United States and the people who go along with them, the international order, international monetary fund, everything we put together is one that assumes historical legitimacy. People that are outside of that are questioning the basic legitimacy of what's being asserted, the way the world's set up with a few people. You have a thing about how we're committed to hierarchy. There's not any much commitment to what's called real democracy or a real participatory democracy, but that there are per people in the world who question the assumed legitimacy of the people who have all the weapons, the same way the Gatling gun predecessors were able to override the uh, objections of people who own only bow and arrow. Well, I mean, we, that kind of a thing. Yeah, well, look, look uh, so Harold, that we could get into an endless argument about this, because if you wanted to find... We could a, argue with religious ferocity on we that. Could, we could, indeed, <laughs> uh, and I hope we don't, but, yeah, no. uh, for example, if you wanted to look at a regime which is completely uh, isolated from any other and completely certain and completely controlling of everything around it, you look at the Saudis. Okay. And they they happen to own most of the world's oil, or enough of it, so that you have to pay close attention to what they do That's and right. what they think. Well, the Saudis happen to be a, a group of people uh, um, among whom, if you happen to have a Christian Bible, mm. you're, you might well get executed yeah, as right. a result. This is. This will never happen in the United States. Right, right. And, and so I think one wants to be very careful in, in, in yeah. assuming that anti-Americanism is the pr correct moral form for, for any... Uh, well, I was calling uh, that into question whether or not where... I, I'm sorry, I don't think it's so easy to bypass, if I may. The fact that we're living in a time... We did a thing with Isaac Asimov, great polymath in that, and, and he insisted, he was saying that we live in the most incredibly transformative moment in the evolution of consciousness this generation, right mm -hmm. now, right. not, not 10,000 years ago, not 1,000 years ago, not 100 years ago, not 40 years ago, now. We live in a time of qualitative transformation, and we said, well, we'll be patient for it and all that, but those weapons are, self, are, are species lethal. They could be set off like Sarajevo in the First World War. That could be done very easily. They're fighting tooth and nail, and then, it, it, so that that's an existential new reality in universe in terms of the evolutionary process. On the verse side, what is on the averse side equally significant to that existential killing recapability that's developed, and that's been the leading edge of the research. No, except that, except that if you look at that exact okay. problem, we exploded an atomic bomb in Hiroshima and then in Nagasaki, and haven't since. And so for, what now, 45, uh, uh, 65, 65 years, that's right. the yeah. best, cheapest, most efficient weapon has not been used. Mm -hmm. I think that's a sign of a real transformation. Well, that is, you think it is, right? Okay. I think it, it is. So and I, I wasn't I'm, think, I'm, I'm prepared yeah. to be empirical about yeah, it. Yeah, right, right. So uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, Pollyanna here, and I'm resting easy. And I think that President Obama is being very strategic in looking at who owns the- He did call that thing recently. Well, that's yeah. right. And, but and they, always, they always posit the terrorists are the problem. Not, because the species lethal quality 
of those weapon systems that exist do not make, in terms of weapons, not global warming or something, but they, they, that does not make sense unless there was something that would unleash the weapons of the United States of America in some sort of a thing that is absolutely impossible, we have to let it go. But we know, we do know but that, that it exists is the point. But we do know that terrorists are trying to get nuclear material. Well, we the terrorists, that. the terrorists are trying to get, yes, okay. They're trying to, I mean, and they're not doing it for, uh, instead of going to the Riviera. Mm -hmm. uh, this is serious business. Yeah. And so uh, it is quite prudent, uh, in fact, uh, necessarily prudent, to pay some close attention to that. We know about the, for example, the, uh, uh, Dr. Khan in Pakistan, right. who, who just ruthlessly sold secrets to North Korea. Why is it places. ruthlessly that he does it, but we can do it? We don't. What do is it. the difference? Well, we, it, we why is it okay it. for us to have thousands of? Uh, why is it okay for some people to have that capability, but for other people not? Where there is a certain kind of uh, quasi-colonial attitude, or again, the legitimacy of the Western view of the way in which the world. And you have 1.5 billion Muslims. That's a major part of humanity. Right. There are large segments of which, inappropriately, uh, taking exception to accepting the model that's being imposed by, let's say, Rome, or by the power to be, the West, and, our, uh, and people go along with that. And they're taking exception. You've got people within the, uh, within the Islamic community, scholars, intellectuals, who are questioning, among other things, the financial system. The okay. financial system that isn't being addressed, Mr. Dodd and so forth, they're still going on. They let that thing go. The financial system is very important. And they're coming, and they, they have people, Sharia compliant thinking, where they can get around the use of usury. We've gotten around that, haven't we? Well, All the wisdom schools have were based on usury, the Federal Reserve, the way we set things well, up okay. economically. So there may be a challenge from there at a basic level, and if I may, that the weapons are existentially new. You can wipe out the species. What on the positive side, or on the living side, as Bucky would have called it, is equally significant at the level of capability to the fact that we have finally reached a point where we can do in the whole process of which consciousness evolution. What would be re relevant on the, on the living side or on the positive side? And I, a suggestion, we may have actually transcended material scarcity as an ontologic reality in terms of uh, the, or, or, there's enough for everybody. Okay. All the zero sum thinking is out of date. There's that, but you never ever hear anybody saying anything other than we got to stop the bad guys who are trying to question our right to rule with a system that's not adequate to what the future requires. And where are the leaders coming with an idea that is really relevant to what the future requires in a large systems way of thinking? Well, look, we can have this argument, I think. Well, it has to do with religion. You no, know, it has to do with religion and I, 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 religion, and uh, to come back to the idea of democracy, to communities in which people can have a right to determine parts of their own destiny. Right. And uh, it so and happens, justice. It so happens that we don't have a monarchy here. We got irritated with the one we <laughs> yeah, had. We did. And uh, we said enough. And uh, and, and George III called uh, George Washington a terrorist. Yes. You'll notice. And Mandela was a terrorist. That's right. And anybody who questions the Rome or the leadership of the West, it may be that we are the problem because we do not, and by that I mean the intellectuals. They're not coming up with an alternative understanding of things at a very high, well, comprehensive yeah, level. Yeah, it's it's quite possible. I think maybe we're in danger of oversimplifying the thing because, in fact, there's a lattice work of provident human uh, organization which has kept the nukes out of business You're right from the point well taken because we're still sitting here. We're yeah. still sitting here, yeah. and and uh, notwithstanding all the uh, concerns. Mm. Uh, it, uh, uh, Khan was shut down. The Pakistanis had their own reasons for wanting the weapons because of the Indians, and uh, it's right. very, very, very complicated. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that it's complicated doesn't mean that something isn't working adequately. But let's come back to the. Okay. Yes. Uh, by all means. I'm sorry. But no, no, it's fine. I let, think they interrelate somehow. They do interrelate, mm. but that's again one of the reasons that McGuire and I decided to write this book. Good for you. We thought, yeah. that, we thought that religion was too important to be left to the theologians. I think and so. And economics might be too important to be left. To the economy. Well, that's obviously clear. They've, okay, thank they, you. They, thank you for that. That's important. They've now acknowledged that. Uh, they, uh, and they should have at a university a, uni a department of everything. 
uh, everything is interconnected to everything else, and we break it down and divide and conquer intellectually the human species by dividing it up into specializations that can't talk to one another. Well, the, the, it's an e-day fix of mine, or at least a, a, a pet peeve, but the university is divided and normally and in, internationally into two slots. One is uh, natural science and the other is social science, with the implication that social behavior is not natural. Don't forget which, about the humanities. Which, well, the humanities usually would yeah, come right. into the social science CP part of it. Snow. No, no, right, no, all that. No, no. But the fact is yeah. that uh, until we actually pay attention to human biology, yes, to, the, uh, to the evolutionary nature of our being, yeah. and if, uh, until we stop saying that we were uh, uh, formed when some god thing occurred, <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. rather than that we patiently... But we want to give we want to give credence to it because it's so important to so many well, people, uh, and course, it is a soothing <coughs> thing, and it's an important thing. Well, and that's a, fine, but don't you know, bother me, as okay, it were. Okay, and this is okay, why, yeah. why this country yeah. and some others with the church-state distinction yeah. has been very successful in, in allowing people to believe whatever the hell they want uh -huh. so long as you don't scare the horses. Yeah, right. I think that makes sense. And, don't you? And, yeah. uh, yes, yeah. and, and we've mm. been doing it rather well. Uh -huh. I'm afraid that there has been some challenge by some fundamentalist politicians yeah. one way or another yeah. who usually make trouble. Mm -hmm. And uh, But they even then they know that there are uh, problems with their basic position and they're prepared to be tolerant. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember uh, talking to a guy, it doesn't matter, it happened to know somebody who eventually became a Supreme Court Justice. Yes. And he was involved with a case in which uh, a, a, an atheist family didn't mm -hmm. want to have their child at a graduation uh -huh. where they said the Lord's Prayer. Ah, uh -huh. And uh, he, he really agonized about this yeah. because he's a religious guy. Right. And he finally thought, why shouldn't this little girl be able to go to her own graduation? Right. And so he said, I'm sorry, you can't have a Lord's Prayer at a, at a public event. Wow, what happened? Well, because the girl couldn't have attended on principle. Wow. Because, well, uh, now that's really tricky. It, it's yeah. very tricky, but yeah. the fact is that uh, that's one of the things that this yeah. country has done very well. Uh -huh. It's enshrined the right of people not to be religious right. and right. not to be bothered by religious people. Do you know Noah Feldman by any chance? Mm -hmm. Noah Feldman, he writes... Uh, he he wrote at NYU. Right, NYU, really good. He yeah. writes and he, he says that the, shuri, the, the Islam, it seems to be the enemy du jour, is Islam of our way of thinking. It used to be communist, right? Yeah. And that's gone. But is he, and he said that the Sharia way of thinking, or Sharia, or what they're arguing for, it gets all off base when people are going to blow things up. That's sort of silly, all that kind of stuff. But intellectually, he said, it's what they really, what it really comes down to is what we would roughly call, you have a system where you live by, uh, by the rule of law. You have to have a law, a system like that, and that it's in an anarchy kind of state that they see the world not being just and so forth. Yeah. But do you think that makes any sense? I don't see If it. we're looking at Islam I, uh, as one of the major uh, counter veiling points to the Bernard American... Lewis, Bernard Lewis used to say that yeah. uh, if there's a, a... and he lived there, he knows those languages. Yeah. He said if there's a great demonstration in a square in in, uh, in Tehran and everyone is saying, down with America, down <laughs> yeah, right. with America, down yeah. with America, yeah. and if you uh, had a public radio announcement that they were giving green cards in the next square, They'd the first here. one would be empty <laughs> yeah. in a second. Well, all right. And yeah. so you yeah. look at migration... I did a program with Bernard Lewis back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a brilliant character. Yeah, right. Uh, if you but no, Feldman's pretty bright, too. Oh, well, I, I, and sure. I think the idea that it's a rule of law. If it know? is. Yeah. If, if or, it and is. how does that relate to the religious precepts that people would translate as being a rule of law for justice and equality and all that? Well, if that's what it's about, if it yeah. means that if you're a woman, you have to completely conceal your body and your face, uh, that's... Uh, those, are cu those are often cultural interpretations. They may well be, but uh -huh. they are realities. And so when I find... Yeah. If, if I see... Uh, when I see a lot of women from Chelsea and the Upper West Side. That's where and, you live, yeah. Yeah, or anywhere, uh, flocking to the immigration booth uh, for Saudi Arabia, then I'll say maybe it's an appealing system. Yeah. At the moment... You can't we, drive. You can't you, drive a car. It's not. absurd. Yeah, it's I mean, but a lot of those things are culture, or what's going on in Afghanistan is cultural. Well, it's not cul necessarily... It's not, it's not cultural. I mean, the, the control of reproduction has been the one That's job a biggie. Of, of the every, sex thing has really been a big religion thing, and, because it's so powerful. 
Uh -huh. It's very powerful. And mm. if you and one of the things, and again, here McGuire and I tried to be rather, if you will, cordial about this. If you okay. look, yes, if you indeed, look, I, th I appreciate that. If yeah. you look at what religions provide to populations, right? Uh, most religions will deal with every human event of critical importance, getting born, yes. uh, getting mature, when right. you have to right for passing, first yeah. communication, yeah. or you know, first communion or yeah, whatever, right. and a marriage, uh -huh. a childbirth, death. Burial, yeah. And, and it's usually <laughs> done in a quite <coughs> ordered manner mm -hmm. and uh, with predictable uh, arrangements yeah. and relatively inexpensively. Oh, if uh, you inexpensive. Okay, right. I mean, okay. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, right. Oh. So they had Neanderthal, I think. So evidence. Well, they had that. some yeah. Bar barrier. Yeah. But my 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 point is that uh, that the manner in which you control or respond to or are embedded in the reproductive relationship of life mm -hmm. uh, is a very important index of the quality of a particular belief system right. or social system. Yeah. And. Uh, I, 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 Big, cl big clash between a secular view coming out of the Enlightenment and, let's just say, the religious view that forms so much and is so important to the cultural evolution of our whole world society. It's it's possible. Now we're getting into uh, to deep think, and, and I, get, uh, I get a little more uncomfortable with that than I'm comfortable with. Uh -huh. So, so okay. I'd, rather, I'd rather just... Uh, not just leave the enlightenment out of this for well for the, the secular secular science science well you know the yeah. enlightenment i mean and the thing that's come off uh, 1776 or something steam engine industrialization and secular understanding to where we now know neurotransmitters exist we didn't know it 50 years ago we just didn't know it we had to go on faith and ideas that have come out of history sure, sure, and sure. ways of trying to understand what's it all about alfie questions right well in any event uh, these religious verities remain yeah. in, in place. Uh, the institutions wax and wane. Yes. Uh, you, you may say that religion is in decline on, in America, but you can fill a, uh, an athletic stadium with 25,000 people on Billy a Sunday Graham, morning yeah. with a brilliant performance by right. a preacher. Oh, mega churches. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's a big business. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, a very big business, and you have these incredible guys like Benny Hinn, mm. who are, are just uh, talented performers. Yeah, right. And, and uh, and yet they have this certainty. And there's one guy whose name I don't know, but when he starts thinking of religion, he squints and he looks into the camera as if he's experiencing some major. Uh, have they done the thing. makeup well? Well, have they, is so. the lighting done right? Uh, you know, it's so. like it's like Metro Golden Bear, uh, Hollywood. Yeah, I hope so. Mm. I hope it's all done well. But the mm. fact is that and then there's this popular culture. Yeah. These remain important forces, and it seems to me responsible to understand them. Mm -hmm. uh, to again to be skeptical but not critical. Right. Ab, ab, ab initio. Right. Absolutely, because it's so important. And it's been there, and it's such a, a long tradition. And it seems to me that does help to give people a sense, uh, for good or ill, the tree of knowledge or whatever come out of our, our, our systems of thinking. Uh, we have a reflective conscience where we ask these questions. Unlike the creatures, it seems to me, uh, it's a guess, but they don't have the sort of self-reflective consciousness that we had and uh, that there's been uh, repairing to that, rather like trying to understand what's it about in a sense where we didn't have the knowledge in any rational sense, but you know, it, it's been part of our, our species evolution, which seems very important and we ought to pay careful attention to it and not to be trying to make a dialectic to where it's either or and it'll be a thing where we could subsume, even in evolution, we can subsume things rather than, in a sense, overthrow them in a, in a dialectic thing where one has to win, one has to lose. That's why I like the idea, we may be, non-zero sum might be something that could be really taken seriously in terms of a world where you have nanotechnology coming, all these things that are coming, and the future requires, and the future stretches out like Scientology says to a million years, if we make it. Right. But we very well might not arguing over the kinds of things that have come out of history. And James Joyce had Dedalus say, history is a nightmare from which I'm attempting to awaken. Do you think we live at a time of a qualitative or punctuated equilibrium transformation in evolutionary terms? 
uh, people repaired to that in the prophetic traditions and so forth? People and have been saying that every so often, and it goes on and on, that this is always the time to end all times, or it's the time to begin. Is this really that time? No, I don't, I, maybe, maybe it is, but how would we know? But secondly, the chances are that it's not, we'll just carry on to the next one. Muddle whatever through it is. like the British not did? Muddle, no, not muddle no, through, well, carry on. Carry on, okay. Keep calm and carry on. Keep <laughs> do you have that trademark, yes, sir? Yeah, do you have yeah. that? Keep calm and, and carry, carry on. on. I want to put that on my cow pen. Keep Keep calm and carry on. That's I like right. that very much. And that yeah. tends to work. Yeah, uh, it does. It's got a pragmatic people. thing, and it works. Right. And also, you want to be—we want to be reflective of the fact that we can be not trying to demonize the other. There's so much of that. Is that part of a? Conf you you say hierarchy is built into the human psyche or the human society? One of the great virtues or one of the characteristics of religion is that uh, religions, in theory and in practice in important ways allow people to be equal. So when you go to the mosque or the church or the synagogue or wherever it you, is you're going, you're as important as the guy that owns the factory that you work at. And so, But you're not as important as the pope. Well, in that, terms of the hierarchies that uh, undergird the religious institutions. Look how quickly the pope's, the pope's feet have been shaken by this pedophilia business. Well, that's true, isn't it? Uh, that it is just, true. It's been a question of six to ten weeks where the mighty pope is suddenly under question. Yeah, in serious. Yeah, in yeah. serious trouble because he was, yes, superior, but he didn't pay careful attention to mm -hmm. the needs of his co-religionists. Is it worth taking into account that the Catholic Church only let uh, Galileo <coughs> off the hook about 12 years ago for saying we were not the center of the universe? Because Hieronymus Bosch, it messed up people's sense of identity that had served them? Catholic is theology is, is an art form. I, I, I would, art form. I, 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 I That's would, another trademarkable event, uh, sir. Yeah, I wouldn't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't uh, go too deeply into that issue because... Uh, well, the world, in a sense, had a hard time coming to grips with the fact that we were not the center of the universe with, you know, Galileo. And, uh, uh, so that's an advance of science and knowledge and understanding and learning right. and all these yes. things. Yeah. And, and I guess it was a big event and it, it's changed Europe and it... Remember that all of the great universities in the world started as theological colleges. Is that true? That is probably uh, basically true. Basically, right? Oxford, Cambridge, you know, Rutgers, where I teach, yeah. uh, Yale, Harvard, all of these were essentially... Not to mention Alexandria. Or, <coughs> you know... They were back, religious foundations. Right. So the religious tradition and the religion... Maybe it goes back to trying to understand that we said Noel Feldman said that Islam is trying to understand the rule of law. You want to have some rule to give some understanding. In a certain sense, that would be like an epistemology or an understanding of the, the way the universe is set up. It's something we have a great desire to have in some sense of stability <coughs> and ongoingness and so forth. It's very, very important in terms of the human psyche, and it's one that we probably have to come to some sort of understanding. It seems to me what you've put together in the book really does uh, resonate to that very, very significant, important question that's before us now, and I congratulate you enormously on it. It's very well written, and it's done <coughs> with an understanding. It makes an opening upon an understanding between these similarly, because the secular forces, <coughs> the absolutism, and the people who don't appreciate that, that's a major thing that could set off a horrendous kind of thing like, uh, in my way of thinking, destroying the species. Well, sure. And that would be something worthwhile putting some attention to if we could collectively. We did try. We did try, and we're trying, and we keep doing it, you know, and so forth. So listen, congratulations. I'm sorry I got off on these little things, my hobby horse, but you've given me three or four trademarkable events or statements that Good. come out of this, and I'm going to clear it with your lawyer before I use them. Okay, my your lawyers. battery of lawyer. There you your go. battery you're, of you're lawyers. Getting, There's a whole damn lost. crew of them living under your ideas of what the rule of law connotes, that's mostly right. that it all belongs to you. You know, that's what a lot of the rules you're, of law used to say. You're getting there, Harold. Uh, we're getting there. We're trying and trying. Well, anyway, so it's a pleasure. And the book is, we haven't had a chance to show. We both forgot to bring our copies because we're absent-minded professor types and everything. But it's called God's Brain, and it's out in all the stores now. And you can, we'll be giving some links to it off the notice we'll send out about this program. And I thank you enormously for all your work because you've been working diligently and well uh, a world-renowned anthropologist, and I thank you really for all of that. But thanks a whole lot for okay. coming in. Great pleasure. Right. Your pleasure. I have the perception of world-renowned anthropologist writing on this <laughs> very, very huge subject. 
uh, God's brain. Again, we, it's a Prometheus books, yes. right? And we're going to want to let people know about that and make it available to them. And um, I'm here to say it's really, really good. And it's very, it's very, very good. Not in, a, in an absolute, nothing in an absolute sense, but one that really reaches out with an understanding of the nuance and the importance <coughs> of, of that very singularly important issue. And highly recommended by one and all. Here, we've got up your, your email so that people can uh, connect with that. But again, God's Brain, it's at Borders and Barnes and & Noble and all over, and you can find links to it on the Internet. And uh, once again, thank you really very much indeed. Don't think we can get you over here to become a professor on our network here. Uh, 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 I think you'd be good in television. Do you think you'd be good as a television?